Hey guys, I'm Avish. This is the 11th video of .NET MAUI with Sync Fusion Control series. Let's quickly review our previous session before we get started. In the previous session, we have focused on the list views, sorting, filtering, grouping of list view, and we ended the session by segregating the code with MVVM pattern. I recommend all of you to review the previous session before proceeding. We are familiar with editors and list view controls from the previous sessions. Before finishing the remaining controls, we will now switch to data grid. A data grid is a graphical user interface control or component used in software development to display tabular data in a grid or table-like format. It provides a structured and organized way to present data to users, making it easier to view, navigate, and interact with data sets. Data grids are commonly used in a wide range of applications from desktop software to web and mobile applications to display data in rows and columns. Data grids are versatile UI components that are commonly used in a wide range of applications to display, manipulate, and interact with tabular data. Data grids are widely used in runtime applications. Let's take a look at the applications that use the data grids. Customer support software can employ data grids to manage support tickets, track customer inquiries, and monitor support team activities. Accounting and financial software often use data grids to present financial data, transaction history, balance sheets, and other financial information. Inventory management systems utilize data grids to display product listings, track stock levels, and manage inventory items. Customer relationship management systems, which are the CRM applications, use data grids to display customer profiles, sales leads, communication histories, and other customer-related data. In CMS platforms, data grids are used to list and manage content such as articles, posts, media files, and user-generated content. E-commerce websites often use data grids to show product catalogs, including product name, description, prices, and images. Dashboards often incorporate data grids to display real-time data, metrics, and key performance indicators. Education software employs data grids to manage student records, grades, attendance, and course schedules. Not only these, they are widely used across different applications such as data reporting and analytic tools, database management applications, HR and payroll systems, booking and reservation systems, medical records and healthcare software, data entry and forms, scientific data analysis, geographical information systems, project management tools, and etc. These are just a few examples of how data grids are used in various software applications across different industries. Data grid provides a structured and user-friendly way to work with tabular data, making them a very valuable component in many software development projects. Hence, it is very important for us to understand and implement data grid. The Sync Fusion data grid is one of their components designed to help developers create interactive and feature-rich grids in their mobile applications. The Sync Fusion data grid offers various features and capabilities beyond the basic functionalities of a standard grid. Some of its key features include data binding. The data grid can be easily bound to various data sources such as lists or collections to display dynamic content similar to the list view. Developers can define custom column types and sizing, allowing for highly customizable and visually appealing layouts. The data grid supports the grouping of items, allowing users to organize and navigate content more efficiently. Users can sort and filter the items based on specific criteria. Stacked header freeze panes is another great feature of grid to freeze the panes while we scroll the details. Developers can extensively customize the appearance and behavior of the data grid to meet their specific requirements. This includes defining column templates, cell templates, styling, and formatting options. Sync Fusion places a strong emphasis on optimizing the performance of the data grid control, ensuring that it can handle large data sets with smooth scrolling and minimal rendering delays. The data grid supports in-place data editing and provides validation options, making it easy for users to edit data directly within the grid while maintaining the data integrity. Real-time update is a great feature of data grid that can be used to refresh the stock prices or any sports score based on the publisher subscriber models. 
Exporting is another option in DataGrid which can be used to export data to a PDF or Excel formats. Given that the data grid and list view appear to have identical functionality, you might be now wondering when to select one over the other. Before concluding, let's examine how they differ from each other. In list view, items are displayed as vertical list one item after another. Each item typically consists of a single row of information and it is in a linear layout. In data grid, the grid view items are displayed in a two-dimensional grid organized into rows and columns. Each item is usually represented as a card or a title. List view is suitable for displaying text-heavy content or information where the order of items matters such as email messages, articles or file directories. Whereas in data grid, it is suitable for visual content such as images, videos, product listings or thumbnail-based content where a more visual presentation is beneficial. List views are ideal for presenting content in a more compact form when space is limited. Data grid is effective for showcasing a collection of items with a uniform structure. List views are often used for displaying detailed information about each item including metadata. In data grid, each item is often displayed as a card or tile with a thumbnail or image and a brief title. List view typically includes a small thumbnail or icon next to each item along with a title description and other relevant information well suited for displaying textual content and long lists. Data grids are well suited for visual content where the emphasis is on images or multimedia elements. List view scrolling is typically vertical making it easy to navigate through a large number of items. In data grid, scrolling can be both vertical and horizontal especially when there are multiple rows and columns. List views are well suited for touch and mobile applications as it provides a clear one-dimensional scroll. Data grids are well suited for displaying visually rich content but may require additional user interaction to view details about each of these items. The choice between list view and grid view depends on the content and user experience you want to provide. My recommendation would be to use list view when you want to emphasize textual content, detail information or a linear flow of data. Use grid view when you want to showcase visual content, make efficient use of space or present items with uniform visual elements. In some cases, applications and websites offer users the flexibility to switch between list view and grid view based on their preferences, allowing them to choose the presentation that suits their needs best. This flexibility can enhance the user experience by catering to different viewing preferences and content types. We'll concentrate on learning how to code all essential data grid features in this and the following session. Let's now switch back to the code and get going. In the previous session, we have used the employee information and binded the data to the list view control. We will take the same employee information and enhance that to bind this to a data grid as I want to demonstrate editing and other features of data grid. Let me stop this application now. To add the data grid, let's update the NuGet package manager. So let me right click on the project and let's see the updates over here and you see that we have syncfusion.maui.dataform and other controls. Let me add the data grid over here by browsing it and remember I, I have already added 22.2.5 as the version so I'll stick to this version. I don't want to upgrade at this point of time but in the later stages of the sessions I'll be upgrading the packages. Let me browse and click on syncfusion.maui.datagrid and let me choose this grid. We will use the grid export later. For now, let's stick to this version and click on install. The package is successfully installed. Now let's switch to the XAML file and do the necessary changes. Let's now add a view here. Right click on the view, add new item. Remember, we have segregated the code in the previous session with MVVM pattern. So I'm just following that. Click on .NET MAUI, click on content page XAML, and let me choose this and rename this as employee grid and press add. Now we got a content page over here. And in this content page, let me make this content page similar to employee list in the employee grid. Before that, let me go to extensions, sync fusion, choose Essential Studio for .NET MAUI. Let's launch the toolbox over here. Now from this toolbox, let me remove this vertical stack layout here and then 
I'm going to create a content page dot content here so that we can add the data grid. So let me close this now. Let me drag, drag and drop the SF data grid. Let me look where is SF data grid here. It is below the SF data form. Drag the SF data grid and release it here. So our SF data grid is created. Let me name this SF data grid as employee data grid. Once it is done, what we need to do is we have to add the employee layout view model to the binding context. How do we do that? Let's go over here and type in as content page dot binding context. We have to declare the binding context and add the reference to the binding context so that we can bind the list to this data grid. Now, before doing that, let me do one thing, XML namespace. Let me declare the namespace for binding and call it as equal to CLR hyphen namespace colon and which is nothing but our Syncfusion MAUI app dot source dot view model. Remember this view model, we have declared the employee layout view model under this view model folder. So that's what I'm binding it here. Here. Now, once we bind this, we need to reference the binding over here stating binding of employee layout view model. That's all it is. Let's enhance this data grid now and add more properties. Let's add some property related to scroll, which are horizontal scroll bar visibility is always. And I'll also add vertical scroll bar visibility as always again. Let me also add a row height here, row height, let me make it as 48. And then let's add column width mode is fill. And then let's add the item source over here, which is nothing but binding of employee data. Now let's also add some default styles to this grid, which is data grid, SF data grid dot default style. Let me copy it from my other screen, paste it here to make it faster. That's it, these are the default styles which I have added for this data grid. Grid style with some font family and font size so it is consistent across the columns. That's it. So we are done with the content page data and the data grid here. Let's now switch to the employee info object and enhance by adding more properties here. Let me add few properties here. Property, string, let me name it as gender. Let's add one more property, public, date time. Let me call it as instead of date, Let's add the joining date and then property. Let's add phone number as a string and then property. Let's also add, let's tag the country information of the employees. That's it, save this one. And let's switch to employee repository here and enhance the list to accommodate the changes. To make it faster, I have added the gender, phone, date of joining and country properties to this collection. Now let's go down and add gender equal to employees of gender. And then let me also add phone number. Let me add joining date equal to employees of I dot DOG. We named it as date of joining there in the list. And then we have country code. So let's say employees dot country. That's it. We have mapped it. We have created all the properties over here, fill the data temporarily and we have binded the data over here. Now the next step is to switch to appshell.xaml and let me copy this employee list which is in the top, create one more and in the content template instead of employee list, I will change this to employee grid. That's it and let's title it as employee grid as well and even the route will change to employee grid. Let's restart the application and check the output. Notice that the flyout item is pointing to the first content page, which is employee list, and hence the employee grid is loaded default. Now, if you see this grid, the columns are pretty chopped off. So let me switch to the employee grid.xaml file. And remember, I have given the column width mode as fill. Let me change this to fit by cell and save this. Look at that. We now have the grid with horizontal scroll bar as well as with all the columns and the data binded to this grid without even mentioning any custom layout templates. By default, the grid is binding all the columns using this item source and displaying the output over here. With this, we have successfully done the data binding of the grid view. Let's now quickly add filtering feature to this grid view. We have already done filtering in list view. 
it is pretty similar to that with some few small variances over here. In order to accomplish that, let's add a search bar so that we can type in some text there and the grid will be filtered based on the type text for the employees. In order to do that, let me change this layout a bit by adding the grid and grid column definitions. The grid, what I'm adding here is a layout grid, not the SF data grid. So let me add the grid and uh, close this SF data grid. Let me add the search bar over here under the grid before the SF data grid so that we can search the filters. How do we do that? Let me add a frame over here. Let me quickly copy the frame so that I don't waste much time. And uh, within the frame, I will embed a search bar. So let me copy and paste the search bar here. I'm doing it pretty quick. Please refer to the previous tutorial if you want to know how the search bar is added for the list view. Once this is done, I'm going to add another frame and within that frame, I'm going to add this SF data grid. So let me close the frame here after the SF data grid. Now let me save this file. Now it is, the indentation is added to this file and you notice that we have an F two frames over here under this grid layout. In the first frame, we have added the search bar and in the second frame, we have added this data grid. Now in the search bar, let's add the filter over here and we'll add a event called text changed and we'll create a new event handler here. And let's go switch back to the code and observe that we have a filter text text change event created when we added the event in the XAML file. In the code behind file, let me add filter records method. Let me add it here from my other screen. I'm doing it pretty quick because I've already addressed these things in my previous sessions. So I've created a, a method called filter records, which takes this object and it will filter the objects using the employee info class. That's all it is. Now we have to bind this filter record event to the filter text. How do we do that? First, we take the search bar, which is the sender, convert that to sender to a search bar. And then if the grid view dot view is not equal to null, then we are going to bind this filter records for the filter. In the list view, it is list view dot filter, data source dot filter. And in the data grid, it is view dot filter. That's all is the difference over here. So immediately, once I bind the filter records, what we need to do is we need to refresh the filter. And uh, that is done using employee data grid dot view dot refresh filter. That's all it is now. Let me save this application and uh, let me switch back to the XAML. Now we have a frame. We have the search bar, which takes the input text and it triggers the text changed event. We have another frame where the data grid is embedded within the frame so that it is stacked one after the other in the grid layout view. These are the very small changes that I have done over here. And let me restart the application now. Notice that the application is up and running with the horizontal scroll as well as the search bar over here. Now within this cursor, I will type in the name Aaron. Look at that. The grid view is filtered. Let me type in some more name, Sharon. Everything is getting filtered from the grid view and it is pretty fast. With this, we have successfully completed the data binding and filtering of the grid view. In the next session, we will focus on next set of features available in the SyncFusion grid view. Till then, thank you for listening and have a great day.